we are going to look at the maximum cardinality matching problem for bipartite graphs. So say G is a bipartite graph, the problem is to find a matching in G having as many edges as possible. This problem is more general than the perfect matching problem because if G has a perfect matching, then a maximum cardinality matching is precisely a perfect matching. A difficult aspect of this problem is to determine if we have indeed found a matching having as many edges as possible. And to work towards that, we need the notion of a node cover. So we call a subset of the nodes, C, a node cover, if every edge in G has an end in C. So for example, if this is my graph, then taking these two nodes and put them in C, then C will be a node cover. Now this edge happens to have both ends in C, and that's fine. An immediate consequence of this definition is that the cardinality of a node cover must be at least the cardinality of any matching M. And the reason is this. Say you have a matching. Now because no two edges share the same end, every node cover must have at least one node from each matching edge. And so the number of nodes in a node cover must be at least the cardinality of a matching in G. So the cardinality of a node cover provides an upper bound on the cardinality of the matching. And it turns out that for bipartite graphs, the smallest possible cardinality of a node cover is equal to the largest possible cardinality of a matching. And that's the content of Koenig's theorem. So Koenig's theorem states that if G is a bipartite graph, then tau of G equals nu of G. Here, tau of G denotes the minimum possible cardinality of a node cover and nu of g denotes the maximum possible cardinality of a matching. Very often, Koenig's theorem is proved using network flows, but we're going to give a proof that uses the perfect matching algorithm. The first thing to observe is that, since we already know that tau of g is at least nu of g, it is sufficient to show that there exists a matching m in g and a no cover c in g, such that the cardinality of M equals the cardinality of C. And we're going to proceed by induction on the number of nodes. Now, if the number of nodes is zero, we can simply take the empty matching and the empty node cover. So let's take a graph with at least one node. And we'll assume that the statement here holds for bipartite graphs of fewer nodes. So we apply the perfect matching algorithm to G along with the empty matching. And we'll let x comma y be a bipartition of G. So there are two cases depending on what the algorithm returns. So the first case is that it returns a perfect matching. If it returns a perfect matching M, we can simply take one of the partitions as our node cover. And because every matching edge joins a node in X and a node in Y, the cardinality of M must be equal to the cardinality of X, which is the cardinality of C. So that takes care of the case when the algorithm returns a perfect matching. Otherwise, the algorithm will return a pair M comma T, where M is a matching and T is a frustrated M alternating tree. And without loss of generality, we may assume that all the matching edges belong to the tree. Because we can throw out edges that are not in the tree, and we'll still end up with T being a frustrated M alternating tree. Now one thing to observe is that the cardinality of the odd set is equal to the cardinality of this matching. So here's an illustration. These nodes that are circled are in the odd set. And remember that every time we add a matching edge to the tree, we add a node to the offset, so this equality holds. Now we're going to set C to be the offset T. At this point, we cannot say that C is a node cover because we might have some part of the graph outside of the tree T, like this. So what we do is to observe the following. So let's say this is my tree T, and this is my set C, which is its offset. Because T is frustrated, each node in the even set 
has to be joined to a node in C. No two nodes in the even set are joined by an edge. So basically, if we remove C from the graph, every node in the even set will be an individual component by itself. And then the graph contains something apart from the tree. And if there's any edge that joins this part to the tree, it has to join to a node in C because we cannot have an edge like this. Otherwise, T would not be a frustrated M alternating tree. So what we do now is we apply induction to this part of the graph. And we will obtain a node curve for this part, let's call C prime, and a matching M prime, so that the two sets have the same cardinality. And now we claim that C union C prime is a node cover of the original graph. That's not difficult to see because, first of all, C is definitely a node cover in the tree. C prime is a node cover in the graph apart from the tree. And any edge that goes between the tree and this part here is already incident to a node in C. So every edge must have an end in either C or C prime. And obviously, M union M prime is a matching in G. But what do we know? We know that M union M prime has cardinality given by the cardinality of M plus the cardinality of M prime. And this in turn is equal to the cardinality of C plus the cardinality of C prime. And that's just the cardinality of C union C prime. And that completes the induction.